I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucer. Are they crashing by accident? Right. Mission failure or on purpose? Right. It's called upon to investigate reports of unidentified flying objects. We can learn to disabuse ourselves of some of these scientific dogmas if we just recognize we've got some limitations as well. There's a lot we still don't know. Well, when you Think say spiritual, that. like what, what makes you draw that conclusion that they're spiritual? What's the obvious? I mean, spiritual may be the wrong word. Supernatural. My name's Liam Bodie, and welcome to Channeling the Truth, Season 2. Last season was my introduction to YouTube, and I wanted to have a channel about spiritual channeling, but I didn't know quite yet what form it would take. I connect with high light, high vibration, enlightened beings, and I've learned a lot from them. I pretty much gave them the mic and in a way said, anything you want to give humanity a message about, I'm down for it. And what came out of those sessions were wonderful, loving, spiritually guided messages to help whoever listens to it grow their light and expand their consciousness. I was wondering what I was going to do for this season, and considering doing much of the same spiritual channeling as last season. However, I had an interesting event happen that I was a part of. This spring, I saw a UFO on the Gulf Coast of Florida, and through that encounter and afterwards, I continually connect with different species of non-human intelligence, and they have a lot to say about what's going on right now in human evolution and what's happening with UFOs or UAPs. So that's the reason I'm making the shift and formally introducing myself instead of just letting the channeled messages speak for themselves. Right now in the UFO community, there's a lot of great work being done on a scientific level and in the realm of investigation. There's even parts of the community that cross over into my side of the conversation where remote viewing and expanding your consciousness comes in. When it comes to channeling, there's a lot of folks who don't know what to think about it, or call it a name like woo. Maybe to describe something that they're interested in, but they're unsure of how others might think, so they subscribe a name to it that gives them cover in the form of humor. In reality, when it's done right, and you get yourself up to the highest level of vibration while using your channeling muscles, it's like having a cell phone to the stars. And almost anyone can do it, but it takes a lot of time and practice in the right way, just about like any other discipline. In reality, the largest part of the UFO community thinks that there's a UFO cover-up, with the expressed interest in the conspiracy that the government is reverse engineering recovered UAPs, and keeping it from the public. Only if the government would give up the goods and tell the public, this would be the great win everyone seems to be looking for. But now more than ever, with Arrow and Sean Kirkpatrick giving the same old song and dance, trying to make people who are the most noble and trained individuals in our military out to be nut jobs, and the major media outlets lapping it up like trained house pets. Now, wouldn't it be nice to just ask an alien, tell them to spill the beans on what they know, why they are here, and what their motivations are, and how much does the government actually know. That's where I come in, and this channel becomes a valuable tool in the arsenal for the truth in the UFO UAP topic. That's why, in the next episode, I'm going to cover the event UFO enthusiasts think where all of this alien talk started, Roswell, New Mexico. I'll be channeling the beings on the craft and see what they have to say about the event. What really went down? What does the government really know? What did they really recover? Why are they here? What was their mission? That and more on the next episode of Channeling the Truth.